Hi, this is Katie from the Bone Clinic. The exercise we're going to focus on today is the hip hinge. The hip hinge is a natural human movement pattern that is often missing or underused in our modern lifestyles. Taking the time to master and to train the hip hinge will really pay off in dividends because there's huge carryover into how we perform our strength training exercises, into how we play sport, and in how we perform many of our day-to-day -day activities. The hip hinge is a foundational or developmental movement pattern. And when a foundational or basic building block for human movement is missing, then many of our day-to-day -day activities will be compromised as well and the quality of all our movements will suffer. Movement quality matters because if our basic movement patterns are poor then our day-to-day -day activities will be wear, have a wearing down effect on our bodies whereas good movement nourishes our bodies. The good thing is that when you recover or improve your hip hinge, you will automatically improve the performance of many of your day-to-day -day activities as well. Our bodies are remarkably adaptable and resilient. So even after a lifetime of neglect, your body will respond beautifully if you provide it with the right inputs and the right environment. So even if you have neglected your hip hinge for decades, you can still get it back. Our hip joints are ball and socket joints and they're designed for maximal movement. So by using the mobility of our hips, not only do we nourish the joints, but it also means that we can maintain our neutral spine position when we bend over to pick something up. So take time to master the hip hinge because it loads the hips and spares the spine and the knees. Now I know it can be very difficult to understand where our bodies are in space. I know that when I listen to instructions or watch a demonstration, I can think that I understand what I need to do and I think that I can feel when my body is correctly aligned. But then when I go to do the exercise and my coach comes along to give me feedback, I find that I can be way off in my perception of how my body is actually moving. So when you're working out at home without a coach, how do you know that you're performing the exercise correctly? Well, one way, one strategy uh, that is very useful is to create a feedback loop. So with the hip hinge, we can use a chair and a wall to create a feedback loop. So the chair is providing feedback to my knee position and the wall is providing feedback for my hip action. So get yourself organised by the, uh, placing your feet hip width apart, feet are pointing straight ahead. Then we organise the spine, so get your stack. Uh, the ear should be over the centre of the shoulder hip, knee and ankle joints. Then we need to stiffen the torso, creating 360 degrees of bracing. And now we, wish, uh, now we just need to hinge at the hips, bottom goes back to touch the wall, and then stand tall. Hinging at the hips, push the ground away, pull the hips through. Hips go back, Pull the hips through. So some of the common faults that we see in the hip in this pattern is that the knees travel forward. And of course, if I let my knees go forward, the chair is going to move, and so that's providing feedback. With the hip hinge pattern, we want to keep the uh, shins as vertical as possible. So try not to let the knees move forward. But also, we want to be 
careful that the knees don't move back. So you can see here my knees are too stiff and now I've lost contact completely with the chair. So once again, that chair, we want the knees to stay in contact because we want the knees to hinge, but they hinge in place. They don't travel. They're a little bit like us at the moment. Another common fault is people will hinge at the hips, but they will just bow forward. So now you can see that my hips haven't travelled. But in the hip hinge, we want the hips to travel back and we want to touch the wall. So the wall provides feedback. We want to feel that we, with that we, we touch the wall. However, be careful that when you touch the wall that you don't lean on it. There should be no transfer of weight. It's just to provide feedback and then we push the ground away to come back up again. And of course, other uh, common faults for our hip hinge is spinal faults. So you remember how we use the broomstick to provide some feedback for our spine. So if you place your broomstick behind your back with those three points of contact, our head, our upper back and the sacrum, your sacrum is just the lower part of your spine. And then maintaining just that gentle curve in your low back, when we hinge at the hips, we want to make sure that we're maintaining that neutral spine. Um, we need to avoid overextending or arching the spine. So that's something I need to be mindful of because I uh, have a tendency to let my rib cage lift a little bit as I go into the hinge and I now have this big banana back position. So in order to avoid that, you just want to make sure that you've got a very strong brace and that you make sure the relationship between the rib cage and the pelvis doesn't change. So when you're going down into the, into the pattern, that you're maintaining that relationship. And of course the other uh, one that we always want to avoid is rounding the spine, flexing our spine. So we take care that we don't let the spine round over. So you can see as soon as I let my spine round, I've lost those three points of contact. So we want to keep that neutral spine, get all the work, um, all the movement coming through the hips, through the hip joint. That's a really good drill that you can use frequently to really groove the pattern. But of course, if you're a minimalist and you don't have a chair, another um, useful thing is you can um, use a proverbial fig leaf. So if you've only got a fig leaf to wear, um, you would place it strategically over the pubic bone. So standing with your feet apart, place your fig leaf on your pubic bone and now when you go into your hip hinge the fig leaf travels between the legs so your fig leaf needs to go between your legs so that's another thing that you may find useful but also it can actually help to use resistance sometimes resistance can be of assistance adding a load can actually um, improve your body's proprioception. So I recommend that you place your load uh, higher up off the ground, particularly if you're stiff, but um, it's just much, it'll make it much easier. So it's an easier way, easier way to learn the pattern. So you get yourself organized. So obviously you need to get the stack. You need to stiffen your torso and now hinging at the hips, you come down and you hold on to the load and then you stand up and the load just comes along for the ride. So we're hinging at the hips and we're linking onto the load, standing tall at the top. So 
What you need to be mindful of here is firstly the arms don't bend because you're not lifting with your back, you're lifting with your hips. So you can think of your arms and hands like meat hooks hanging off strong shoulders. Most people need to be very mindful about the way down. So it's very common to let that weight swing out away from you. But we always want to keep our load close to our body. We want the load to be going back into the, exactly the same spot as where you pick it up from. And of course, if you don't have a kettlebell, you can use a household object, like an oil can. So you just place it set up exactly the same. Think about on the way down. When we come down, we're thinking about reaching back with our bottom, and you should feel the hamstring stretch. A nice stretch through the hamstrings in this bottom position. So the hip hinge pattern should be your go-to movement pattern for many of your day-to-day -day activities. So whenever you pick up a child or lift a bag of potty mix or pick up a laundry basket, you should be using the hip hinge pattern. But not only for when you're lifting a load, but also when you're doing those light repetitive movements, such as when you're unloading a dishwasher or hanging clothes out. We also want to be using our hip hinge pattern. And even for static positions, such as when we um, bend over the basin to brush our teeth or bend down to smell the roses. And don't forget to take the time to smell the roses. Before I finish, I just want to emphasize that in order to exercise safely, we don't just need good alignment and good movement patterns. They are necessary, but not sufficient. Another important component is the stiffening of the torso. So when we're going to smell the roses, you don't need to overthink it because providing that you're not, providing you're not carrying an injury, your body will um, look after that automatically. But when we add load, that's when we need to be a little bit more conscious of stiffening the torso. And the greater the demand, the greater the need to stiffen the torso in order to keep the spine safe. So the hip hinge, it's a simple pattern, but simple does not mean easy. I know that many of you will struggle to establish this pattern, but please persevere because it's worth it. Anyway, I hope this helps. Thank you.